Welcome back. Robin has also incorporated his pumpkin and butternut with maize and amaranth. Intercropping helps in diversity and stability of fields, reduction in chemical fertilizer application, complementary sharing of plant resources such as nitrogen from nitrogen fixing plants, weed suppression and reduction in susceptibility to insect and diseases. I am I'm intercropping butternut and butternut uh, pumpkins with, uh, with uh, amaranth and maize. Uh, amaranth, amaranth uh, the, but, uh, the, the pumpkins leaves once they start spreading, they'll, 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 they'll offer cover for the other. The, for the, it's like it, 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 it acts as a cover crop for the other, for the, for the maize and the amaranth. It, it ensures you maximize use of space because uh, from one zipit you're, you're growing, you're growing two trees of uh, pumpkins or butternut. Uh, you're growing two, two, two or three stalks of maize. There's also like two or three stalks of amaranth, and yeah, they survive perfectly there, which ensures there's maximum, you have maximum production with the with the, with the least area. Makwani being an arid area means that irrigation is the only way. Robin uses overhead irrigation to water the crops. He has an underground water source where water is pumped to the crops using solar energy. Irrigation, I use, uh, I use, I, I use water from, uh, I use overhead irrigation. I was, the first time I was using donkeys and uh, to fetch water from the river and I'd use buckets, but now I've got a solar, a solar pump which I'll be using to, to pump water from my, from my underground pond. Both pumpkins and butternut take between 120 to 150 days to reach maturity after planting. Butternuts and pumpkins take six months, six months to, 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 to get uh, from, 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 from planting to start harvesting. Pumpkins and butternuts are affected with pests such as squash bugs, caterpillars, vine borers, aphids, snails and slugs. Robin cites caterpillars as the major pests in his farm. Robin uses rabbit urine to control the pests. You only mix one liter of urine with five liters of water. The, cater the caterpillars drill holes on the, on the leaves of the pumpkins and if not uh, taken care of early, they can damage the crop. Since I started using rabbit urine to spray my pumpkins and butternut, I have never had a problem with pests. Yeah, but the, the one which at least once once in a while uh, you'd see some a uh, leaf or two is caterpillars. Pumpkins and butternuts are squash plants and are mainly affected with diseases such as powdery and downy mildew, gummy steam blight, anthracnose, and wilt disease. I haven't experienced any diseases so far since I started planting butternut and pumpkins. Uh, they, require, they, they require less maintenance. One, one of the crops I realized they require less maintenance. Once you grow, as long as they have nutrients, as long as I've spread the rabbit urine, it's, uh, it's not easy for the, rab uh, the, the, the pumpkins and the butternuts to, to, to get diseases. But yeah, if, not yet, I haven't, I haven't got any problem with the butternuts and pumpkins. Pumpkins that are ready for harvest should be bright orange in color depending on the species with a hard shell. Their stems and often the vine itself should be starting to dry out and wither. Don't harvest pumpkins that are still soft, they won't keep for more than a few days before spoiling. Use a pair of clean shears, cut the stem and leave it a few inches long. Don't break off the stem since this will cause the pumpkins to rot. When the, 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 the fruit has formed. Uh, a month after the fruit has formed, uh, you'll just, you'll just, you'll just, uh, like, uh, I always do like a canoking thing and when I, you, there's like an echo here <laughs> and I know it's ready. And once, once one is ready, most, because I planted at the same time, I've given them the same, same conditions, planting conditions, they always have, they're always ready at the same time. You cut from, because the, 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 the malenge is still, the, the, sometimes you'll find there are, there, are, there are pieces which are not, which are not ready from the same plant. So you don't cut the hole, you make sure you, from the stem, huh, the, the, the fruit is, is attached. So you just cut from the stem and make sure you haven't damaged the, the, the mother plant. To avoid post-harvest loss, pumpkins should be stored in a cool, dry place, away from humidity, dampness and direct sunlight. 
a mild chlorine rinse before storage can discourage mold and fungi. Use a mix of 1 cup household chlorine bleach and 5 gallons of cold water. For storing, uh, mostly, mostly I, 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 sell, I sell my fruits because we've been, uh, we've, been, we've, been, we've been planning on investing on value addition for pumpkin, uh, pumpkin flour and uh, pumpkin seeds pumpkin seed oil. Uh, we may have been in talks with, uh, with some people and we want to see how we can partner. But for now, I, I harvest and I take to the market to prevent post-harvest losses. Robin explains to us the benefits of cassava farming. Malenge and butternut are very marketable, nutritious, mostly for kids. And uh, uh, pumpkins are very good for kids. Uh, pumpkin flour, you can use it in porridge for kids and diabetic people, people with special needs, nutritional needs. Like my mom, she, 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 she's diabetic and she, she uses the pumpkin flour on the, on the porridge. You can use it to make chapatis, you can use it to make it, you can mix with. Uh, with wheat flour to make mandaz, yeah, it, it, a lot array of uses. Uh, there's also uh, <laughs> pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are when roasted, uh, very good, uh, going uh, at uh, 300 for 500 grams. And uh, pumpkins will go for 250 a piece. Or sometimes, depending on people who are buying bulk, I'll sell at uh, 80 bob a kilo. Robin has great future plans in regards to cassava and butternut farming. I want to expand. I want to, to put more, more, more crop and in, in a more acreage uh, because I want to, to focus on value addition because value addition brings more profits and generates more income for the farmer. So I want to do value addition for the pumpkin flour through investing in the solar dryer where I'll be drying the pumpkins right now. Because right now, if, if I have to, to dry them, I'll have to use someone else, which will be costly. So yeah, I'm intending to invest in that so that uh, we, can, we can have our products in the market, our pumpkin flour products and pumpkin seeds. We have reached the end of the show, but before we wrap it up, Robin has a message to wannabe pumpkin and butternut farmers. I'll, I'll, I'll tell anyone wishing to start uh, butternut farming and pumpkin farming to first do research, ensure first your soils. You do, you do a test for your soils, you know, you know your soil type. Because maybe what worked for me won't work for them. You have to make sure you test your soils and uh, use the internet. Use the internet to get information, speak to farmers, who, other farmers who have done this kind of farming so that they, you understand the challenges they have faced, so that when you start, it won't, you won't get shocked if something happened out of something you didn't plan for.